is ready because it's not that kind of show. Um, hi, my name is Sean Perry. Um, I am the director of the Stoneham High School Drama Club for the festival this year. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you all. Um, but I want to tell you that today for this production, I'm not the only director. Um, I'm not the sole director for this production. Um, I've had to be absent for a few days because unfortunately on Monday my mother passed away. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. I have to give credit to the amazing staff that have been working with me um, because without them this production just wouldn't have taken place. Uh, not just that, but all the students who stepped up to make this happen. I can't thank you guys enough, so please let's give it up for them. Specifically, I want to thank my assistant director, Ms. Rebecca Griffin. Um, we'll do a festival clap, so everyone goes like this, and then after I say the name, you do one big clap together, okay? So, Ms. Rebecca Griffin. Mr. Liam Gladding. Our tech director, Dylan Bush. Our amazing volunteers, this is the big one, you ready? Hold on. John Reynolds, Inez Costa, Ashlyn Sacco, and Anthony Jean Goulis. Thank you, and all of our parent volunteers. Big volunteers, big, big um, All the boring stuff, our safety exits, are to my right, to my left, behind you, and in back of me as well on the stage. Please sil silence any cell phones, any babies. That gets a couple laughs. Um, this show um, involves a five minute setup. And to just explain that briefly for you, our crew, our amazing crew, has five minutes to take our set and put it on our very blank stage. Um, and they have five minutes to take that, those set pieces off at the end of the production. That's a rule that METG has. Also, our production has to stay under 40 minutes or else we're disqualified. Um, so um, just be aware of those rules as well. Um, this is a show about community and loss. And in the last week, I have found, felt both profoundly. So this production, <clears throat> is in honor of my mother, Dawn, who was my light. So I'll hand it over to Maisie. Thank you very much.
a merchant. I told you that. He was a businessman. I told you that too. Lizzie, there's nothing new to tell you. Now sit still. I've told you the story a hundred times. Ouch. That's all it is to you. A story. No, it isn't, Lizzie. How will she Every time I look into your eyes, I smile, and I thank God for that moment with that man that gave me you. Ribbon? I want you to be much more than I am, more than I'll ever be. But you, you and Miss Margaret, you give bread to all those kids that have nobody and nowhere to call home. No, Lizzie, you made us aware. Even though you were sneaking bread from under our noses. It was just going to be thrown away. Hey, sassy pants. I'm not scolding you. I'm just trying to tell you that I'm proud of you. Those kids, they're fun. They're lucky. Lucky? They have you. Did you love him? Yes. Yes, I loved him very much. And did he love you? Yes. He wrote me poetry. He did love me, but he loved himself more. And me? And you. I la la love you. I la la love you too. I'm pretty lucky too. Hey, Lizzie! Oh, well, I'd better get off to the bread shop before Miss Margaret butts her bloomers. You'd better be there shortly too. Here, now skedaddle. Oh. Be the light, my sweet girl. Lizzie!
Hannah yeah. knows. It's like her second home. I had to go once when I got caught kissing that fancy boy. Worst night of my life. The rat hole's wet and full of mud and I don't know what. And fancy pants wasn't even worth it. I heard that's where Marie Laveau gets the rats and snakes from the rituals. You mean the voodoo queen? Voodoo! And Yellow Jack. I heard he eats every kid that gets snapped out. <laughs> Now, you vermin don't play nice. You're going back. Come on, come Why, good morning, Constable. What's the state of affairs in New Orleans these days? Who are you? The name is Julian Poitras. He's rich! He's old. Ew. Ew. Well, Mr. Poitras, Harris Carroll, pleasure to meet you. Mr. Carroll. So, tell me, what brings you to our part of town? Mr. Carroll. Call me Harris, sir. Mr. Carroll! Us politicians have been working with the constable here to get these streets a little less popular. And it seems you and your associates have been causing some problems. And to be quite honest, you're not very good for business. Like filthy lights. You can never get rid of them. Hey! The city is about to be cleaned up. Consider yourself warned, Mr. Carroll. Warned for what? Evacuation. There have been signs of yellow fever in the city recently. You have two weeks to find somewhere else to reside. Constable. What's he mean by that? It means we gotta relocate. Again? But this is the best we've had it. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Can't you just ask them for a place to live? Can't you just ask them for a place to live? Go back to the bread shop, little girl. We can take care of ourselves. Hey, Lizzie, don't worry about us. Thanks for the bread. Same time tomorrow. Nothing like him. My, my girl, she's, she's on up. I'm fine. Fine. Anna, Anna, are you okay? 
Associates? No, sir. My mother works with the bread lady. Mrs. Landry's your mother? Yes, and she works. Anna's your mother? Yes, and she works with the bread lady. You know, Miss Margaret? Oh, yeah, Miss Howery. Yeah, her. She says if you politicians were doing your job. Look, Lizzie, the young lady. You'll have to excuse her, sir. She doesn't. No, no, no. I'd like to hear her. Go on. Well, she says the politicians could easily solve this issue by spending some of their recoup dollars to help find the forgotten a place to live. The forgotten? No parents, no home, orphans. Sir, don't waste your breath. Is she right? Who? The bread lady. Couldn't you help? It's not that easy. There are laws, ordinances. We work hard to protect the city, and I work hard to ensure that it thrives. It's nothing personal. It's just business. And quite frankly, you're putting all of that hard work into jeopardy. So no, I can't help you. You mean you won't help? Careful, young lady. This isn't your fight. It's just business. I'm sorry, but it's just not possible. That's it. All right, your ghost has disappeared. I don't want to see you in these streets again. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's just not possible. I told you so. Now what do we do? Nothing. But you heard the concept. I said we don't do nothing. So you're just going to oh. let us? Oh, so you want to be in charge? You think that they're going to follow some one arm Bible up and nobody? Well, anyone else got something to say? Paris, come what? on! What are you going to do, little Lizzie Sunshine? I'd do something! Of course you would. Everything's easier from a comfy bed. Yeah, must be pretty terrible to have a place to live, a mother, and a full belly. And... Hannah, stop! You don't know what you're talking about! Oh! Did Daddy run off with someone? Hannah! What? What did you say to me? You heard me. Poor little girl slumming with the fleas, trying to feel better about herself, trying to be one of us. Shut up! Lizzie! Oh! Hannah, no! Oh. Oh.
There is no more. You heard that Poitra guy. It's too hard to take care of much of nobody. Just business. I do more than the business deal. Don't you want something more than, than this? I do. I want to be a businessman, and I want to be filthy rich. Well, you kind of gotta be smart for it. Okay, sister. I want to have a family so big, they can't even fit all around the table. Table. And all boys, so the family name will live on forever. What about you, smarty pants? Well, I'm... I'm writing a book. Oh, oh, Peter, write about me. Write about me. Come and on. No one gives a hoot about a one-armed orphan. Moa, buddy, <laughs> my one-armed baby. No, no, but think about it. A one-armed pirate. Arrgh. Well, come here, Jack. Everyone remembers an adventure, but no one's gonna remember me. Oh, but how could anyone forget you, Moa? I'm afraid of being forgotten. Why? Because it seems like everyone I've ever been close to ends up forgetting me. I won't. I know. You're different. Is your mother like you, Lizzie? No. Well, I don't know. I think we're alike sometimes, but she's, she's just, I never knew my mother. And my dad, well, he couldn't. He blamed me. Left me with a Bible and took off with my two sisters. Oh, Moab, so scared. Hid most of the day in one night. He found me. Huh? Scared the mess out of me, too. Reached back behind the garbage bin for a piece of crust he dropped. Grabbed my foot instead. Took us both by surprise. But he took me in as his brother. I haven't looked back. We stick together. It's what we do. Oh, really? And what else do you do? Well, I guess I never thought about that. Peter's writing a book. Gio's going to be a businessman. Don't you have a dream? No. No, why not? Because it's dangerous. Dangerous? How is dreaming dangerous? That's ridiculous. Because if I dream it, and it never happens, that's, that's another person in my life that I've let down. Like your family. Like every one of us. We don't try because no one will remember an orphan. No family, no home, no legacy. My mother says it's our job to make this world a better place. Matthew 5.14. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Preacher man, no one makes this a better world for us. I just want to live, to survive. No one is going to live forever. It's not about living forever. It's about doing something that will. Yes, Moab, that's why you're my favorite. I've got to get these to Miss Wheeler or Miss Margaret's going to kill me. Don't forget to ask her for- She won't forget, Fink. That's her way of making this world a better place. Making the world better with bread? It makes your life better, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Miss Margaret, the Red Luther. Elizabeth, Miss Margaret, I was just coming to. What's the matter? Why are you? Where's my mother? Elizabeth, we were talking and she collapsed and she wasn't doing Is good. Is she okay? We have to go find her. Is she okay? Oh, no, Elizabeth! The yellow fever, Lizzie. It got her. No. No! She passed before he arrived. No. Elizabeth, I need you to listen. You must run home and get everything you can before that landlord of yours finds out and takes everything his greedy hands can hold. We must hurry. Then we can decide what to do with you. Hello, Jack looks across my grave. It's not funny. Starving. We haven't seen the bread lady in days. Poor Lizzie. You think she's okay? Aw, poor little girl just lost her mother. That's enough, Hannah. No one cared about me when my parents died. The city of New Orleans surely didn't care. It's all about you! <laughs> Jeez, spy captain actually speaks. He's right, though. No one doesn't care about her. No one. Lizzie does. The bread lady does. Then why? Why do they care? I mean, what's in it for them? It's our job to make this world a better place. Isn't that what Lizzie says? Or, well, her mother? You know, Moab, if I didn't know any better, I'd think that you're a little sweet on Lizzie. Uh, no, <laughs> no. And, you know, maybe she's right. Maybe there is more. I'm tired of hiding. 
Maybe we ought to fight to be heard. Oh, really? I think maybe you ought to shut up. <laughs> I ain't fighting nothing. Ain't going back to the rat hole. Guys, who is listening, Moab? Woodrow! Who? Julian Woodrow, that fancy, smancy politician that told us to leave. How's he gonna help? How's he gonna help? He already told us we're not worth the trouble. He just happens to own most of New Orleans. And those politicians are always looking for a good cause, right? I ain't no charity case. Well, what does it matter? We all end up in the same place. You live, you die. Lafayette number one holds the rich and the poor. Hannah, I get it, I do. Lizzie, wait, why are you, what about the bread lady? I can't stay with her. What, why not? Her spinster sister said she wasn't taking care of nobody's child. Oh, what am I going to do? She left me just like he did. I have no one. You have me. And me. And me. And me. And me. And me. Well, us, I mean. We're not blood, but... You're part of our family now. Our family sticks together. Constable! Go! Shh! Go! Remember? Well, where? There's nowhere to go! Oh, you're so smart, aren't you? sleep at Lafayette number one. The cemetery? No one's up there. No one. Sims on the Leopold, too! Oh, Watch out for you, Lucia! Lucia, I can't do this! That's my bed. What's your problem with me? Move. Make me. Curl, I'm not gonna ask you one more time. Move! Last time I checked, it's public property, so I think I'll just sleep here tonight. This one does belong to me. Read the name. Here rests Henry, Henry and Harry Harriet Myers. Myers. 1811. Oh, Hannah, I... You wanna know what my problem is? You think you own everything. You stick your nose in it when it's not your business. You always have something to say about everything, and Harris listens to everything you say. This is not about Harris. Oh, it isn't? Huh. Interesting. You're lucky. You had more time with the mother than any one of us. That's not my fault. You took her for granted. I miss mine. I woke up one morning to tell him I wasn't feeling so good. And they were just lying there. I, I shook my mother and she didn't move. My, I started screaming at my father to wake up and he didn't. So I went back to bed. I don't know how many days passed, but I remember the constable. The constable and some other men, they, they were taking my parents and I told them to go away. He grabbed me and told me if I didn't calm down, I was going back to the rat hole. And they left me there in the bottom of a stinking rat hole. Three days where someone remembered I was down there. I don't, I don't want your pity. Go. I'm sorry. Wake up! 
Stop! Wait! It's okay. Make them hear your voice. What are you talking about? My mother. Listen, she's gone. No! She came to me in my dream. She wanted you to make a difference in this world. How? How were we supposed to? We're nobodies. Ghosts. That's what you said. Why even try? How can a nobody change anything? Maybe it is us, Lizzie. Maybe we are the voice. Doesn't work like that, Harris. Why? Why wouldn't it work? Peter said. Because I don't want to make it work. I want my mother back. All I ever did was complain about him. Now look who's playing the victim. You know you're not the only one here to lose someone. It is not all about you, Harris. Shut up. <laughs> I miss her. Do you miss? My parents? They just... I mean, how do you just forget a six-year-old? I don't think I can do what you do. I look out for myself. You look out for them. They look up to but you. What have I really done for them? We're, we're sleeping in a cemetery and stealing out of people's garbage? We shouldn't have to live like this. What do you wish you could do? I wish I could be more like you. Always caring, a little Lizzie Sunshine. It's not about me. Exactly. Never is. You know, we can do this. To what? Stand up to Poydras. How? Proverbs 30 and 8. What? Proverbs 30 and 8. Speak up for those that can't speak up for themselves. It's about time that we speak up, Moab. I thought you said we were a lost cause. I used to think so. Are you with me? You know I am! Come on, guys, wake up! Get 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 up! Rise and shine, everyone! Rise and shine! We got something to say. We got something to say. Everyone, listen up. You remember that politician, Mr. Poydras? Well, what do you say we get him out of that big fancy house of his and help us instead of sweeping us under the rug? I'm in. Oh, calm down, you big hussy. He already said he ain't messing with a bunch of nobodies. Well, then we change his mind. He's got more money than God, and he said he wants to get these streets a little less populated. Look, they want to relocate us. So how about we make him put up or shut up? You think he's just gonna give us money? I can use some coins in my pocket. No, but he could put that money to good use. Miss Margaret said he could use that money to house us orphans, to keep us off the streets. I don't need no house. I don't answer to nobody. Oh, so you'd pass up a meal, a blanket, shelter from the rain. That's what I do. Yes. And what the yellow fever scare, if these smart ruthless politicians could get us from up somewhere and help stop the threat. Yellow Jack so, couldn't catch us inside. That's a great thought and all, but do we actually have a plan? Well, um... Numbers. We have them, right? I said we march right up to Mr. Poydra's mansion. And we make our voices heard. We tell him to get a roof over our heads and get us off the streets. It's a win-win for both of us. Maybe he'll open up his home. Maggie, enough with the old guy. You think he's going to listen to some smelly old kids with no parents? No one cares. You know, they just might, Hannah. Tell me, have you ever tried? Have you, Gio? Think. If we want to make a change, we have to all stand together. For me, for you, for us. Well, I'm still in. Let's I'm do it. In. I'm in. Yeah, me in. I'm in. Please. Well, I'm not going to stay here by my lonesome. Yes! Come on. Let's go. Does anyone know where you live? I do. Miss 
Landry. Yes, sir. And you brought all your associates. Do you remember that conversation we had a few days ago where we asked if the politicians could help? Ah, uh, yes, I believe you thought us politicians were responsible for your current circumstances. That is not what I said. Lizzie, wait. No. Mr. Poydrop, with all due respect, I never said the politicians were at fault. But I did say that you have the means to help us. Now you have a choice. And what's that? You can choose to help, or, or you can choose to fight. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so what exactly are you proposing I do? Well, they say that you have more money than God. Oh, they do, do they? Well, do you? Well, I live quite comfortably. I started off as a mere merchant, worked my way up to a businessman. I even invested in real estate. Real estate, huh? What's that? I spend money on land and buildings. And what do you do with those buildings? Well, I sell some of them to other business owners. And the others? Well, some are empty. Just waiting for somebody to live in them. So you're suggesting that I just give you a building to live in as you please? Sounds like a good plan to me. Why can't you use one of those buildings to help us? Well, Miss Landry, you have a mother. So you're technically not one of them. Uh, sir. You're mistaken, sir. What? Her mom is dead. Hannah, no. I'm so sorry. I hadn't heard. Why would you? People like you don't care about people like us. And you didn't even know her. But I did know. Look, Julian, for once in your life, you have the opportunity to do something that matters. You can stand up for those who never had the chances you had. You can... It isn't worth it. He doesn't care. I care. I don't want you to be left behind. Any of us. I... I just... chance to do something, something worthwhile. I can't change the past, but I can help you change the future. So I promise you this, I'll provide you a building. Miss Margaret will help, and we'll make sure no child who's been forgotten will be left behind. And Harris, who will even know he existed? There's no grave for a forgotten. Lafayette number one will be his final resting place, right there for generations to see. A monument for destitute orphans. He will be remembered in life and after. Will this suffice, Miss Landry? Elizabeth, it will, Mr. Poydraw. the 
office of the coroner. The following residents of the Poydras Island have expired due to complications related to yellow fever. Harris Carroll, Maggie McCarthy, Marie and Marguerite Wagner, Geo Jackson, Peter Hatcher, William Moab Lyman, Felix Fink Seleski, Hannah Myers, Catherine Blake, and Elizabeth Landry. The residents of the Poydras Island will forever reside in Lafayette number one, square four. Lots 365 to 368, the Poydras Orphans Rest. Among the philanthropic works of his lifetime, Julian Poydras founded the Poydras 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 Island in New Orleans. Orleans. Chartered in 1817, the asylum acted as a home for children left destitute from the effects of the yellow fever. A wealthy French merchant, Julian Poydras, was an early supporter and donated a home on St. Charles Avenue and Julia Street for the use of the Sisters of Charity. Along with this society, Ms. Margaret Howery, the the bread lady, Mr. Poydras worked for many years helping neglected orphans and widows in the city of New Orleans. Over 150 years since it transpired, evidence of the yellow fever epidemic can still be found in New Orleans cemeteries. The benevolent construction of the Poydras Orphans Rest serves as a memorial for the young voices who never had the opportunity to be heard. Tell our story.